Kalyanam, a fast emerging major venture, and floriculture is a potential money spinner when compared to any other crop in agriculture or horticulture. So commercial floriculture is becoming important from the export angle and uh, cut flower provide more returns per unit area when compared to any other crop. When compared to field crop, even in horticulture, uh, vegetables and uh, floriculture gives more returns. Even compared to vegetables, floriculture is better than that. Per unit area can be very high because of the low volume, high value nature. It's a steady increase in demand of flower. Every year uh, the increase is uh, uh, going up and the area expansion also going up through National Horticulture Mission Project and various support from the Government of India. And the liberalization of uh, the industrial and trade uh, policies paved the way at development of export-oriented production of cut flowers. Still, the quantity exported is limited, except uh, rows. The volume is not sufficient to export to other countries. And other reason is the domestic consumption itself is going up very well in compared to any other crop and uh, you know about the, the flowers are freshly used as well as making various um, bouquet and other uh, ornamental purposes as well as the decorative purposes and apart from the fresh flowers the dried flowers is picking up there are a few industries and the Tamil Nadu is a leader in the country and the dried dyed bleached and uh, the converting the waste into the wealth is the purpose of it and uh, it is used in various uh, forms like pot puri, decors, home decors, etc. I don't want to go into detail about details. You all know very well. It's a, as I said, it's a huge opportunity sector. The export of floriculture produce, you can see very well, 19,726.57 metric ton to the value of 571.38 crores in the during 2018-19. And uh, the value of Indian floriculture market, you can see, is a very big uh, in the global scenario. And the domestic consumption is uh, increasing every year. The growth rate is 15%. And including a lot of flowers, uh, traditional flowers as well as the cut flowers are uh, being grown in India. And the states involved, the most major states, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Uttarakhand and Rajasthan are the major states involved in particles production. And you know very well about the uh, Tamil Nadu scenario also. It, Tamil Nadu is, occupies 25% of the country's flower production, particularly in the traditional flowers. It's a very important point you have to note it. And our traditional flowers, other than the cut flowers, are being exported to Sri Lanka, Singapore, Malaysia. And the cut flowers, particularly the rose, is exported to Europe and the USA. And these are the important locations, the cut flowers are concerned. The rose is the very ideal uh, district, is, uh, the Kishnagiri district, the location is the rose in and around. The, because of the ideal microclimate and it is grown under protect cultivation, the rose is the important hub for, uh, Hosur is the important hub for cut flower rose production. Whereas carnation is being largely in Nilgiri, followed by Kodakanal and a few pockets in Hosur area. Lilium in the present day, the major production in Nilgiris. Zebra, it's being grown in Kurnur, Kodakanal and Erkat. And the cut chrysanthemum, and the other than the, the traditional chrysanthemum, the exclusively the cut chrysanthemum is being grown in Kotegiri, Erkat and Ozur. Anthurium is being grown in Erkat. And uh, the tropical orchid, the dendrobium market being grown in Kanyakumari and Pudukote. And Pudukote uh, people, the officers may be knowing that in Kandarukote, in the non-traditional area, one of the leading growers, they are growing around 10 acres of a tropical orchid and it is being sent all, all over the country from there. And coming to the protected cultivation, we all know that um, we have to create an environment for growing exotic cut flowers by can, and making a protected structure like polyhouse or shade nets or any other um, uh, protected structure we have to create depends upon the microclimate. We have to identify the right location is very, very important. If you identify the you know, adverse area and the investment cost will be very high. So we have to identify which are all the locations suitable for a particular flower that is more important. As I said, floriculture is a low volume, high value crop. Selection of the crop is very important for the particular region. And as I said, promising commercial agriculture venture is a money spinner, like a business, it can be 
uh, when compared to any other business, the cut flower production can be taken up. And as well, it is a protection from biotic and abiotic because of the uh, flowers are being grown under cover. And the labor and the input efficiency is there because it's a precise operations are being taken up so that very well we can uh, uh, manage efficiently the labor and inputs. Coming to the uh, polyhouses, uh, polyhouse is part of grid. Greenhouse is a general uh, terminology. And here the polyhouses are being used for production of the cut flowers under cover. And you can see the picture, overview pictures, it is being taken uh, at uh, Nilgiris. This polyhouse, actually, you can see that it is a multi span polyhouses. It's not a single one, it is a multi span polyhouses. And um, it's a aerodynamic in nature. The natural ventilation, it goes inside the polyhouse and comes out of the rotation automatically out so that the stagnation air of air should not be there inside. The, if the air is stagnated inside, it will create a lot of problems. And uh, the, our polyhouses are not fully controlled polyhouses. Whereas in the European countries, where the adverse climatic conditions, they have the, I had a chance to visit Holland, Italy, and other places. They have the fully protected polyhouses, or not polyhouses actually, it's a greenhouses. The covering material is uh, fiber or glass houses will be there, where 100% the environmental control is possible. And it's very highly expensive. So that here for Indian conditions, to identify the right locations, we can have only the partial control environment, which is where we can investment is comparatively less. And to temperature plays a major role, not only to enhance the quality production, the temperature is the important thing to contain the pest and diseases. Uh, entomology sitting in front of me, the temperature increases in the polyhouses, naturally the sucking pest will be the dangerous one. So that uh, the air circulators have to be provided so that um, we have to have the conducive environment inside the polyhouses. And for example, I, I have actually shown some of the type of greenhouses and the red mark is the polyhouse. Other than that, all are um, different types of lean type, dome type, channel type, constant, uh, constant type, gothic, or A type. These are all the structures of the greenhouses in the where the temperature goes very low, below 5 degrees centigrade, sometimes minus degree centigrade. And here we have the hard material, that is clearing material, maybe glass or fibrous materials. They have to heat the polyhouses in the extreme low temperature. And these conditions will not arise in our Indian condition. That's why our production cost is very less. The sawtooth type is being used in an Indian condition. The sawtooth is modified into the aerodynamic polyhouses. And coming to the basic greenhouse specification, while constructing the polyhouses or greenhouses, we need to have the center height should be 5 point. The center of the structure should be 5.5 to 6 meter height. The gutter height, gutter means the, you know, the collection of water will come and the gutter will be uh, you know, placed with the aluminum materials. The gutter height should be 3.5 to 5 point meter. The side ventilation, ventilation provision of the ventilation is very important. All the four sides we have to have at the height of two meters and top ventilations. Here you can see um, um, they are just under the green colored one. The top ventilation should be one meter. Per. Coming to the uh, uh, fill, the character of the fill should be the width it should be 5.5 meter, thickness should be the 200 micron, the length maybe at your convenient you can select, depends upon the size of the polyols. The cladding material plays a very important role. While, while the selection of the cladding material, we must be very cautious. We have to select the diffused as sheet in the tropical conditions, in the plain, because the radiation of the sunlight will be very heavy. Continuously, the uh, sunlight, uh, no, more than eight hours will be there. Here, we have to filter the sunlight so that it should be the diffused one and the UV stabilized one. Whereas in the hilly areas, the limited hour of photo. I mean, the light is available so that we have to maximum harvest it. The penetration should be more in the uh, hilly area so that we have to have the, otherwise it is called clear. It will be in a white, pure white color, whereas the diffused one will be a uh, slightly yellow color. And they, nowadays, the Ginniger and other companies are producing, and because we are spraying chemicals and continuously fogs are being given, we used to have the resistance for all these chemicals and other water also. 
and multi-layer greenhouse polyfill. It should have the anti-drip quality, anti-fog, anti-mist, anti-sulfur because sulfur coated, particularly for rose and all, sulfur-based chemicals we use to spray. Otherwise, it will spoil the poly and um, polyfill. Very frequently, we need to uh, change it. It will be expensive. And anti-dust also there. Very importantly, UV blocking is very, very important. These are all built nowadays in the uh, film itself. Uh, again, coming to the management of the internal factors, the temperature, humidity, air, everything is very important. We have to provide, and wherever the climate is not so much conducive, it is slightly you know, higher than our required temperature, particularly in the tropical region and all, we compulsorily need to have the fan and pad system. Uh, you, you might have seen that in the one side the pan will be fixed, the opposite end of the pad will be fixed, the pad will be you now slowly, uh, continuously it should be wetted with pouring of continuous watering, so that by suction uh, the air will go inside and moisture will be you know, obtained from the a sheet and the temperature will be reduced as well as the humidity will be enhanced for the required level. So pan and pad system is very very important. One side the air blow should be there by suction it has to pass on through the uh, pad system so that we can maintain the temperature and uh, humidity inside the polyhouses. And uh, the simple system is the shade nut houses. Wherever possible the climate is so conducive particularly for uh, tropical orchids we need not have the Poly houses, the simple shade net itself enough. In certain area for Gerbera, shade net. Whereas carnation and all, we cannot grow it in shade net. Carnation, Lilium, this and all compulsorily required uh, poly houses only. Uh, Gerbera, Anthurium, orchid, tropical orchids can be grown. And sometimes in places like Anyakumari, there will be a continuous uh, rain and heavy rain will be there. In the cases, in the shade net, we can have the rolling system of poly sheets. And during um, uh, monsoon period, we can unroll it. The polythene sheet will cover the uh, shade net so that we can avoid the water going inside the shade net houses. And this is very important aspect. There are all different shade covers. Shade covers means the you know they have to uh, sometimes need to you know, protect the plants in the uh, summer period. In the polyfilms itself should be covered with by spraying some paint, or otherwise you have to place some. Uh, shared screens over the polyhouse, wherever the temperature is very high, so we have to protect the crop, otherwise the temperature will give a lot of other problems. There are white color paints can be, you can see in the right hand side, upside, upper side, the white paint is being sprayed to control the uh, temperature going inside the polyhouses. Finally, the netting materials, there are different uh, type of netting materials, it is polyethylene fabric materials, different ranges. Even uh, 50 to 90 percent, sometimes uh, even 30 to 40 level percent also available. Normally it is available in different colors and the colors also plays important role. Mostly our tropical conditions, the green color suits very much, uh, followed by the black color. And as I said, the ventilation phase is very, very important. The ventilation actually allows the greenhouse to ventilate and cool by natural air movement within and outside the structure. That is outside the structure also very important. And here, maintenance of uniform temperature inside the greenhouse, as I said, is very, very important, for which the low cost mechanism is first natural ventilation. Then only we have to think about providing pan and pad system. Inadequate ventilation inside the greenhouse generates overheating and expensive transpiration leading to problems such as uh, plant water stresses, physiological disorders. If you see a uh, bullhead problem in rows, the calyx splitting, other than the boron and nitrogen temperature also plays vital role in calyx splitting. If calyx splitting comes, selling the flowers is very difficult. If you see in uh, anthurium, the jamming uh, leaf will be, you know, the flowers will get into jamming so that the marketability will be very much reduced. So here, pan and pad system is very important. And the forced, sometimes, as I said, forced ventilation also, we need to hue if the problem occurs. It creates forced air flow throughout the greenhouses, absorbs heat, and optimizes both temperature and humidity. And the cooling system. Um, the temperatures, uh, you know, uh, as I said, uh, in the greenhouse, in order factors, among the different factors, the temperature management plays a vital role. Again, so that uh, ventilation is one aspect. Other than ventilation in summer and all, sometimes the temperature will go beyond 40 degrees centigrade because it is fully covered. 
here we need to have progress system nowadays fine progress are available very minute uh, misting will be given so that the misting will stop in the air itself it will not reach the plant if it reaches the plant again there is a possibility of fungal and other infections are possible and the finest no, um, progress uh, we have to put it, provide inside it one nozzle for every 500 to 100 square feet is optimum other than and the root sometimes as i said in the greenhouses in the summer if you have it in the plains whatever you even if the natural ventilation beyond the, you know yeah, fog the temperature again it will go rise up in that case uh, over the polyhouses we have to provide uh, uh, this you know covering with um, what you call the black quality sorry black shaded coverages so that double filtration of the sunlight will be there so very well we can maintain it otherwise it will create a lot of other uh, problems and recently, solar radiation filtration also they are used for uh, controlling in the temperature. In the ambient temperature, as I said, some places will go beyond 45 degrees centigrade. Here, if you use this uh, filtration, it prevents the excess heat entering the greenhouses by applying NIR reflecting covering material. A block heat up to 50%. The NIR reflecting cover you can use it. Otherwise, NIR filtering pigment coating also possible. Here it will very well blend with the LDP. LDP and all EVPA, you, can, you know it. LDP low density poly, polyethylene, EVA, ethyl, ethyl, vinyl, acetate, a polymer. It will absorb the excess heat. And the UVA, UV stabilized um, absorbers can be used. All the hindered amine light stabilizers. This and all controls the free radicals by absorbing the UV rays and enhance the efficiency of the polyfill. Otherwise, polyfill loses its functioning and very frequently go up also so that uh, these are all the recent technologies being used solar radiation filtration another methodology can be very well used in the high end uh, polyosis and here the next factor is light as i said the temperature or air and uh, the humidity the light plays vital role in fire. particularly the crops like uh, chrysanthemum uh, even formation is very very important you know the chrysanthemum particularly is a short day plant it needs a two types of uh, temperature requirement and initially the uh, vegetative growth it's a long day and become for a flower production it requires um, uh, short day condition here the conventional system normally what we use the incandescent bulb ordinary bulb uh, being used here the light spread is narrow so there will be an undulation in flowering height you can see if you use it uh, there is a the space between one bulb to other bulb under the direct you know lighting uh, from the bulb the height will go high the other side will be shorter so in the undulation of the uh, plant height finally it produces inferior quality of flowers and uh, uneven as i said uh, uneven stem length because of the uneven spread uneven stem length will be there and the quality only maximum 60 percent of a grade only it is possible whereas here also again major problem is in the incandescent bulbs high electricity consumption will be there 2700 units per 500 square meter whereas in the present days totally we are not using the incandescent bulbs the led lights are being used the led here the spread is uniform in the whole greenhouses and the heating also very less heat goes up naturally it will invite to the second place. so that the heat less heat because of the led cooling will be there and the consumption of the electricity also uh, very well here, 66 percent more efficient than the incandescent bulb because the advantages are cost efficiency because the initial cost may be high but the because of the consumption of electricity slowly the cost effectiveness will be less and the compact design nowadays uh, different you know, sizes of the LEDs are available according to the size of the polyhouses we can provide it and the durability also very high very frequently we need not change the uh, bulbs and other things and as i said it's a high quality light is being provided for the uh, crop low thermal energy generation is being uh, generated inside the polyols and the other than that in the recent past in the developed countries and slowly in india also it's coming up automatic greenhouse climate control system is being followed here the sophisticated new technologies they are called sophisticated but in high value crops we should uh, follow it then only we can uh, uh, produce the standard uh, flowers which will compete in the international market micro processes which improves the energy efficiency enable more uniform temperature control and the data loggers 
it is periodically tracking the temperature inside the greenhouses. It, this and all is a robotic system as well as the simulation models are being created inside. Automatically the temperature will be checked and through the computers we can see any fluctuations inside the greenhouses so that it can be altered immediately. And nowadays we know about drip irrigation system, other irrigation system. The automation has come up in irrigation system because the water requirement is not uniform for the entire uh, cropping period. Stage-wise water requirement is required, so the automation will definitely check the requirement of water in different stages. Coming to the uh, production system, and uh, we have to concentrate in five aspect in the production system. One is uh, the media. In floriculture, the very important after construction of the polyhouses for growing, we have to concentrate the growing media. And nowadays we are using, I will tell you, different medias again. And the plectre nursery is very important. Micro irrigation system, fertigation, plant protection, post harvest management. Coming to the growing media, if you use soil, we have to enrich the soil. Otherwise, we have to think about soilless media. But the soilless media is not possible everywhere. If you use the soil media, and it, nowadays we are creating consortia. The, along with the soil, we have to add these kind of materials, you know, uh, for the 30 kg of the media requirement per meter square. We have to have 10 is to 1 is to 1 of formal manure, vermicompost, and coca peat. Plus, we have to have the azospirillum, phosphobacteria, where at the rate of 20 gram per meter square. In addition to that, we compulsorily have to have the biological um, biocontrol agents like Pachyderma viridine, Pseudomonas fluorescence, nowadays Bacillus also being used. For Bacillus, there are two, three species, Subtilis, um, Amylo liquefaciens. For hilly areas, in the low pH, the Amylo liquefaciens is very good uh, and very well being uh, effective for the crop growth or quality flower production. This is the consortia along with the soil we have to add so that keeping the population is very, very important. You know, the important the costly input is planting material. If you don't maintain the population till harvest, definitely we will not uh, get the expected yield. So particularly in crop like carnation and all, the soil bone pathogen like fusarium is a deadly disease. And the fusarium will spoil in the early stages of the growth. If you have this protective uh, consortium, we can save the crop um, up to first flush so that the required population not less than 95% is very well possible. Otherwise, the loss will be definitely there. We cannot uh, expect the number of, because the cut flows are being sold on number basis. It will not be compensated by weight, so that we must be very careful. The the central one is soil media mixed with um, uh, consortia. The left one is cocoa pit break. In crops like lilium and all, 100%, uh, I will explain in the crop terms. Whereas in orchid, we have to use the inert material like charcoal and other things, which has to be grown in the pot, the pot has, pot has to be kept in the stands. <clears throat> Another important high tech is grow back. The grow back is still better than uh, the consortia. It is uh, inbuilt, all the consortia is inbuilt. It's a uh, one meter breadth and uh, uh, length is uh, three to four meter. And uh, we can have it at the equal spacing. Whatever the crop, the space will be provided. The hole will be provided according, the, according to the crop need. Is, and we can very well maintain the population and here in the growing media, only thing we have to do water and fertigation. You can see the pipe you now, the tube is going. It will carry the fertigation and the fertilizer as well as the water. You can see, as I said, soil bound disease is the deadly problem in cut flowers. We can very well avoid the soil bound pathogen. In the recent past, we are experiencing nematode also. So that nematode free we can have. And the weed management is very problem in the particular greenhouses. And it will compete with the crop. It will spoil the quality of the flowers. Very well, we can avoid weeds. And more importantly, uniform population till, till third flush. If you have uniform flush up to third flush, very well, you can um, get the expected income out of the crop. You can see the right hand side how uniformly the crop stands inside the polygos grown under um, grow, grow back system. The soils are replaced by the various substrates such as coca peat, perlite, vermiculite. This is all inbuilt in the media along with the cocoa peat inside the uh, grow back system. So, in particularly crops like uh, carnation, the plug is very important, plug tree nursery. Nowadays, we are using in all the crops, 
here the naked cuttings are planted in the plug. You can see the rooting clearly. You can visible the white colored uh, root uh, clearly. The root number of root is very important, as well as you can see the number of leaves also. If the two things are being satisfied, definitely the healthy growth of the plant very well, and the international standard quality flowers are very well can be possible to produce. You can have the vigorous root development and the uniform um, planting material is possible in compared to the conventional system of growing the uh, root cuttings. And as I said, the duplication, you can see the very simple, uh, the schematic um, representation of the typical dripping uh, drip system for the greenhouses. You can see the tank or the well, from there it goes to the pumping station, from there it is go to the filtration unit, then main pipe, submain pipe, lateral and the uniform bedding will be there for the cropping system. And here, you all know that I need not explain the very high uh, irrigation efficiency due to the low risk of water runoff and evaporation. And here, indirect control of weeds, low risk of uh, occurrence of the pathogens, improved irrigation scheduling and watering suppling. As I said earlier, the stage-wise irrigation requirement can be given up, which will accomplish over the day, including during the warmest hours also, and reduce the soil compaction and erosion. These are other advantages of the micro-irrigation, particularly the drip irrigation system inside the greenhouse. Very, very important input again after uh, that is fatigation. So the consumption of the nutrients is you know, very important for this crop, for uh, healthy and uh, international standard. We have to target for A-grade flows always, which will get, you know, as I said, it's a low volume, high value crop. Each and every plant should have a continuous supply of nutrients. And also, in, more importantly, we have to give the stage-wise nutrients. It is the scheduling for each crop. I have not given the schedule. For each crop, there is a schedule available. Uh, first, four weeks what will be the uh, requirement second four weeks third four weeks during you know uh, flowering what will be the scheduling all this has to be scheduled and here you can see left hand side the top different uh, tanks are there the micronutrients in one tank macronutrients and other organic inputs on tank and each and every tank is connected with the main pulse which the controlling wall system will be provided and uh, even uh, the nowadays the Sensors are available to monitor the fertigation system in advanced greenhouses so that each and every alternate or three, once in three days or four days along with the water, the fertigation has to be given. And very importantly, the, most of the people don't understand the compatibility and what uh, fertilizer should be mixed with the other uh, fertilizer. Here, uh, the chart is given, you can very well note it, uh, the C means compatible. Urea and ammonium nitrate will go together. Whereas calcium nitrate and ammonium sulfate will not have less compatibility. You see here, monoammonium phosphate and calcium nitrate will not go together. It will give adverse effect. It's a non-compatible in nature. So that the scientifically we have to understand which are all the compatible uh, fertilizers so that very carefully we have to select and use it in the fertigation system as per the schedule. Uh, plant protection, it's a very big area in the um, protect cultivation. I'm not going to complete it, it's a very big uh, subject. But only thing, in the as I said, the environmental control system inside the polygos is very important to manage the pests and diseases. If you don't provide the conducive atmosphere uh, for the crop, and definitely how to invite the pest as well as the diseases. Here, as I said, temperature is very a bad factor inside the polyhouse. Whenever the temperature goes up, naturally it invites the sucking pest, particularly red spider mite carnation, aphids and thrips in rows, leaf miner in chrysanthemums. These are all some examples I am quoting here. And coming to the diseases, I already said Fizarium wilt is a deadly disease in the uh, carnation, a leaf spot, botrytis, and all very big problem in liliums. Botrytis, it's a dangerous disease in lilium. Very carefully we have to monitor it and periodically we have to control it. Mildews like powder mildew and downy mildew problems in roses. And here, the company, the breeders are giving the resistant varieties. We have to carefully, there is uh, one Madam uh, College is the important carnation varieties. It's a very good variety, white in color. And uh, it is you know, high yielding variety. And the only carnation variety is having a uh, fragrance. But unfortunately, it's highly susceptible for fusarium disease. So that the variety was totally vanished in the Nilgiris area. 
so that there are different uh, companies are giving varieties resistant to particular uh, crop we have to identify the reason variety is the foremost important after that in greenhouses if you go with the soil the soil sterilization process is very important i will uh, tell you while coming to the uh, carnation crop how we have to do the soil sterilization and the green clean culture always you have to keep the polyoses clean precise management of microclimate as i already said temperature water humidity everything uh, even the carbon dioxide inside the grains is also properly maintained and the timely application of the newer molecules we should not periodically the newer molecules are coming according to the uh, the recommendations as well as the uh, infection or infestation nature we have to identify the newer molecules we have to use it and also the present days the prevention the previous presentation organic uh, they have told that you now use of biologicals and uh, neem based products very well periodically can be used to avoid the occurrence of pestilent diseases here the as i said that these are all the symptoms of the disease in the bottom i can see very well the pests also how is electronically focused to one the red spider mite and the thrips as well as the uh, borer also sometimes sometimes it uh, spoils the carnation crop you have to very carefully manage it and post harvest management so here in the cut flowers the loss of harvest is very big so minimum 20 to up to 40% losses are there very carefully we have to the timely harvest the right stage of harvest is very very important whereas in the rose is you know called it's a right foot stage carnation we have to have the fine press stage i will tell you later if you don't uh, harvest in right stage lot of other problems the opening after harvest will be the big uh, problem after harvesting we have to short time pre cooling is very very important at the degree of 4 to 5 degrees centigrade pulsing it is a short period shock treatment given with uh, high concentration of 8 hqc or 8 hqs and the holding solution like sucrose if you want to keep it in the waste waste material waste uh, containers we have to use the holding solution particularly the cheaply available one is sucrose 4 to 5% wrapping so to avoid the transpiration uh, losses we have to very carefully with use the cellophane film to avoid it you can see the pictures also packing the micro packing each bundle is important after packing the packaging has to be taken for the long distance transport coming to the crop quickly what's time ah uh, quickly i'll go with the individual crops uh, i am going to deal with the carnation rose lilium cut chrysanthemum mancurium zebra tropical orchid each crop there is one or two slides only uh, coming to rose is very important uh, cut flower it's otherwise called the dutch rose uh, the important varieties are taj mahal kohinoor grand gala fastred etc uh, spacing requirement is 45 to 30 cm we can accommodate seven plants per meter square uh, if you properly uh, keep the crop up to 5 years healthy by repeated pruning and bending operations you can keep and uh, Uh, harvesting, as I said, fish mouth stage or right foot stage, you have to harvest. The yield will be 20 to 25 flowers per stem per year. Here, before that, very carefully inside the polyhouses, they have to keep the environmental factors. The optimum temperature is 18 to 28 degrees centigrade. The relative humidity in the beginning of the crop till flowering, it should be 80 to 85 percent. And after slightly Uh, blooming after that we have to keep it only 60 to 65 percent of humidity the light plays a vital role all the flower crop 70,000 lux of the light has to be maintained it natural light itself is enough whereas in rose artificial lighting is not necessary if the condition goes very bad only we have to think about uh, artificial lighting uh, soil ph is 6 to 6.8 and here also we can use the growing media consortia but the media should be highly organic well aerated with uh, good, good water retention and the capacity and as well as the draining capacity should be very important the important operations are bending so that a more number of the uh, flowering shoot can be encouraged a uh, wild shoot sometimes the water shoot and oil shoot will come we have to carefully remove it uh, yeah, after eight week we have to need the pinching operations that is also one of the important horticultural operations and de shooting disbudding has to be done and bud capping is very important certain varieties uh, while in the bud the calyx will open so that we have to have it because it's a costly one it has to reach the international market and bud cap before uh, the tight bud stage itself we have to cover it each uh, bud has to be covered with uh, bud neck 
and the important physiological disorder is bentonite because of the temperature as well as the nutrient management. After that, harvesting, grading. In rows, the stripping is important. You have to strip the excess leaf. The excess leaf will um, you know, create the humidity after packing, as well as the weight also important factor while exporting it. After that, we have to keep it cold storage before uh, making for the long distance transport. And coming to the coordination, it's a very high value crop. The optimum temperature is 18 to 28 degrees centigrade. Again, the humidity is similar to those 80 to 85 in the beginning, 60 to 65. Uh, again, in the blooming state, and light intensity is 70,000 lights. Soil peak 60 to 6, sorry, 6 to 6.5. As I said already, the media consortium already have given the dose. It has to be properly mixed with the soil, and the quality of the soil should be the well aerated and well uh, draining system should be there. These are all the varieties, Domingo, etc. Spacing, very, very important. Now, modified spacing also being used, but the standard spacing is 15 by 15. And we can have 36 plants per square meter. Nearly the net population will be around 97 to 1 lakh plants in one acre of greenhouses. Here uh, we have to harvest very carefully at the pain breast stage. And literally we have to say that while we have to harvest the uh, carnage flowers at the smiling stage. Slightly it will slightly open. That's called the smiling stage. And uh, if you miss it, if you go with the laughing stage, definitely you will cry. So you have to very carefully harvest at the smiling stage. It looks like a plain brush that is called three flushes of big flowering start from um, fifth to six months after planting. Continuously we can harvest this advantage in carnation flowers. Single stem will give so many flowers. Minimum of 15 to maximum of 18 flowers per stem is possible. And here the important operation, the fumigation is very, very important for soil. A calendar is given how to do the fumigation. It's very long elaboration and the any literature is required, please email, I can send it. The important operation is netting, pinching, disputing. These three are very, very important operations uh, we have to do for maintaining the population as well as the quality of flower production. And the high value, very high value crop is lilium nowadays, milgris they are growing. Here very interestingly, is a cold chain process has to be maintained. And while it comes from Netherlands, it has to be maintained into two to uh, 3 degree maximum 4 degree centigrade the bulbs otherwise the sprouting will occur till it reaches the soil it has to kept in the um, two, 2 degree centigrade plus or minus 1 degree so it's very very important very carefully you can see the cold storage structures and uh, the flower the flower i mean the bulbs comes it has to be immediately put it to the uh, cold storages which have carries 1 to uh, 2, 2 degree centigrade and we have to take it out for the staggered plantation continuously the optimum temperature is 15 to 25 degrees centigrade, latent humidity is 60 to 65 percent. As I said, the, even if you go for soilless media, pH is uh, 5 point should not exceed uh, 7. There are two types of williams. One is Asiatic and the Orient. Oriental is high uh, cost one. These are all the varieties. For Asiatic, we have to maintain uh, 60 bulbs per uh, meter square by adopting 10 by 10 centimeter. For Oriental, we have to adopt uh, we have to keep 40 bulbs per meter square by adopting 15 by 10 meter spacing. The duration for Asiatic is 70 to 80 days, whereas for Oriental is 90 to 110 days. Uh, while harvesting, at least one flower bud shows the color. Slightly to low on one bud, after that we have to immediately harvest. Asiatic yield will be 90%, that is 55 to 60 flowers you can um, get per meter square. Whereas in Oriental 35 to 40, you can see the cost. Asia take only 20 to 25 rupees, Oriental 35 to 45 rupees. These are all the planting of bulbs in the rows and very carefully how to plant it. We have to go for a, prepare a calendar, a supply demand calendar. Accordingly, we have to plant the bulbs in the media. This is the crop stand uniformly. You can see how the crop is so beautiful. And coming to the gerbera, again, it is uh, the temperature requirement is 18 to 25. The humidity requirement to throw uh, crop period is 60 to 70 percent. 5 to 5, 5, 6.5 pH, media concerts as well uh, coordination we have to use. There are so many varieties, different colors. The spacing is uh, 45, 40 by 35 centimeter by accommodating 6 to 7 plants per meter square. Duration is 3 years maximum, you can keep it. Outer world of ray flowers slightly open at that stage, you have to harvest. 35 to 40 flowers, uh, flower stems per year. The cost farm gate price is 4 to 5 rupees. And the cut trace and come, it's newly coming up. Here, the photo period regulation is very, very important. I already told about 
uh, the lighting uh, requirement by LED lights you have to provide for uh, either the light critical photo period is 14 or 10. That is uh, 14 hours uh, daylight and uh, 10 hours uh, night, uh, 10 hours uh, uh, night light is important for vegetative growth. When it goes for flowering, it will be reversed. 10 by 14. 14 hours daylight, uh, sorry, 10 hours uh, daylight, 14 hours night hour, night light. So that uh, the critical uh, photo period, we have to very carefully maintain it. Soil pH is 6 to 6.5. And here there are different varieties. The duration is 90 to 100 days. And we have to harvest the standard type, half of the ray for it start unfolding. Whereas in the spray type, at least three flowers should be partially open. We can have 40 to 46 flower stems per square meter. Very well, it's uh, nowadays it's picking up very well. Seven to eight, uh, 10 rupees, depends upon the grade the flowers are being sold. Finally, uh, um, uh, prior to Anthurium, the tropical orchid, it's also, it is possible in the tropic, particularly the Delro Bay market, we can have it shade net is, itself is enough, 15 to 25 degrees, we have to uh, keep the temperature. At the beginning, we have to have the humidity lower. This uh, tropical orchid is a humid lower. We have to have 80 to 85 percent, 60 to 65 for full growth. pH is 5.5. And the soilless media by using charcoal, rices, coconut, has these are all the materials being used. These are all the varieties. Very well, we can keep the crop up to five years. Uh, when uh, 10 to 15 flowers starts opening, we have to harvest it, and the cost will be 30 to 40 very good. Final crop is Anthurium. It's also very high value crop, and uh, the northeastern states they are growing carnation and Anthurium very well. In the aircraft, some of the farmers growing in Kerala, some of the farmers are taking this venture. The optimum temperature is 15 to 25 degrees centigrade, and the humidity, as I said, 80 to 85 in the beginning, at fruit growth 60 to 65 pH 5.5 to 7. These are all the varieties. We can keep the crop by years. And the harvest index is state unfolds and the status is well developed. And we can get 8 to 10 flowers per uh, stem. And uh, the cost of farm gate price is 20 to 30 rupees. Final chapter is quickly I will go through. This is about the protect cultivation of flower. And the, this will uh, value chain. Very briefly I'll go. This is a model project uh through the national agriculture agriculture innovation project this project we have carried out in the department of floriculture between uh, 2008 and 14. value chain is a business model that decides the full range of activities needed to create a product or service the purpose of the value chain analysis is to increase the production efficiency so that a grower can deliver maximum value for the uh, least possible cost here the concept is production to consumption system. We have to see what are all the things happening in the flower plant. These are all the major uh, missing links. Low volume of flowers to meet out the export market. Still uh, there is a big potential for export market, but the volume is not sufficient. Uh, since the high value crops, or even the traditional flowers like uh, jasmine and all marigold, the technical know-how and the do-how facilities are lacking, and the awareness in the market system. That's why it is being you now exploited. Uh, still, both the domestic and export the market system is not fully explored. Lack of timely and precise price information is not available to the farmers so that uh, they cannot uh, grow the crop in the right time and uh, get the maximum price and the peak uh, demand. Inadequate postcard because you know, floriculture, minimum 30 to 40 percent uh, loss of harvest, still there is a big uh, lack now of the inadequate post harvest mechanisms. As I said, low volume is being um, uh, so big lacuna in the export system. And we have not a value chain in jasmine. You know, jasmine is uh, our one of the lead important, particularly for Tamil Nadu. The jasmine flowers nowadays being exported to Gulf countries, Singapore, even up to USA. We developed a mechanism to send flowers to USA, France, and other countries. And uh, due to large Indian population settled, there is a big demand for the jasmine flowers for various reasons, as religious functions as well as the uh, wedding and other uh, program. This is a small supply chain program. The, in the Satyamangalam, the site we have selected is Satyamangalam for export market. This is only for export market. The flowers are being harvested early morning between 5 and 7, 30, 7 a.m. After that, it reached the uh, local market uh, between 7 and 7 30 in Satyamangalam itself near Pastan. And then the exporters will go to Satyamangalam market. It is being sold between 7 30 and 8 am. After that, one of our partners in the project is Vanguard Export in Coimbatore. 
he will collect the flowers between 7.30 and 8. And by 9.30, it will reach his place at Kwaimoto. After that, the value addition is being taken between, I will show the value of the products later, between 10 and 12.30, the value addition in and around uh, this company, a lot of women uh, uh, are available in the house. They will be doing the value addition to the jasmine flowers. After that, between 12 and 12.30 and 1, it is being packed. Then you can see very interestingly, it goes to the two markets, Dubai and the USA he is exporting. For Dubai market, it goes to uh, Kochi uh, airport. It will take three to three and a half hours from here. And there are three flights from Kochi to Dubai. And in the same day evening, the flower harvested in the early morning, it reaches the same day evening, the Dubai market. And the next day early morning, it will be dispersed to the consumer. The next market from Kaimathur to Mumbai for USA, and it will take 30 to 35 hours to reach the New Jersey or New York. And there is a system. There are two packaging systems we develop by using this packaging system. The exporters are very well exporting the investment flowers. Uh, these are all the various value added products because of the time constraint and going quickly. And these are all the packaging technology for Dubai market. This is the uh, boxes, the you no know, corrugated boxes is very well enough. After the loose flowers, after making into veiny, the, uh, the veiny, it is a saram. saram. It is being uh, the otherwise called a spring treated with 4% boric acid. After that, it's unfurled into the uh, boxes, which is uh, lined with the um, uh, material, the thin paper, cellophane, the paper, what, what you call uh, uh, moisture absorbing paper. After that, it's packed, and then these the boxes are having nine holes in four sides and for the micro ventilation. After that, it reaches Kochi market, then it reaches the Dubai market. Here it is advanced method for US market. The same flowers converted into veining. After that, treated to boric acid. After that, it, it will cut into five pieces. Number one, the malam is a thumb roll. Five, one, meter, one feet uh, uh, length is being cut. And it is kept in the aluminum coated um, small cake boxes. These cake boxes are placed in the thermocol boxes. In between, the ice gel is being placed so that after that, um, 30 hours to 35 hours transit. After reaching USA, again, 30 to 35 hours, we can keep it for usage. These are all the advanced packing system. The flowers harvest in Satyamangalam. The next day, it will reach the USA after value addition. Coming to the marigold, it's very interesting crop. It's going for the contract farming system. We work with the ABT group and the various uh, the xanthophyll is the pigment being exported. This is only for uh, xanthophyll production. It is not for flower production. These are all the production system. Uh, low yield and the less xanthophyll content. We work to enhance the yield as well as the xanthophyll content. The marketing is through. Here you can see from 2 rupees to 6 rupees in the project period, the quality has enhanced because of the uh, high content of the xanthophyll by using various uh, production technologies. And the after uh, reaching the Satyamangalam, uh, there is a microprocessing and a semi-processing is being done and it converted into pellet. The pellet is going to the Kochi laboratory. After that, the ole resin is being extracted. The ole resin is being exported to the uh, USA and other countries for mainly for poultry feed and baby food preparation and high related, uh, you know, to solve the eye problems making various tablets and other things. These are all the different value chain because of the time constraint. The, the last one, the third and the um, uh, fourth one is the very ideal system for uh, industrial purpose, producer to wholesaler, retail then consumer. Whereas in the export market or the company, directly from the producer, the process will get the flowers so that they will get more prices. Uh, this is a marigold, a contract farming system. And coming to the coordination, uh, they're all, as I said, a lot of constraints we identified, starting from soil preparation, pest management, physiologically, so everything solved through this project. And then here, marketing, after uh, you know, post harvest management, there are two types of market in coordination. One is fixed price throughout the year. For that, four rupees, eight rupees. Uh, direct marketing, the buyers will come from minimum to maximum eight rupees they will pay. And again, here through middleman, if you go, every day the price will fluctuate. So there are two types of marketing. According to a convenient, the flows can be sold. But here also, there are uh, different um, uh, chains in the supply system. And if you see, more than 70% of carnation flow is marketed through the channel 1, 2, 3, and channel 4 and 5 are mainly used for export market. So that you can, according to the demand, you can use the supply chain system.
Finally, I come to the dry flower. We here uh, converting the waste into the wealth, whatever be the material, and it will be added uh, value addition by converting into various products. Mainly, the poker has even in the used, you know, what do you call it, tamarind after extracting the pulp, the fiber can be used. So many materials and uh, uh, pine coal, a lot of materials are being used. First, here, sourcing of raw material is important. Standardization of dry flow technology. Here, drying, glycerinization, bleaching, and drying are the important operations. After that, value addition is being done. We are doing various training, various products. You can see a wee, a pot puri, and uh, decor materials. A lot of materials are being uh, uh, prepared. Marketing is mainly 90%, more than 90% is being exported, and only less than 10% is being sold in the domestic market. Coming to finally, future press. As I said, you know, it's a money spinner. It's a high, low volume, high value crop. It's an expensive one, but like a business, we can do the floriculture. Here, expensive work on soilless cultivation need to be concentrated in the future because a lot of diseases are coming through the soil provided. We have to go with soilless cultivation and production and supply of planting material because it's an exotic crop. There is a big constraint in getting quality planting material. The government of um, uh, that India is concentrating. Recently, government of Tamil Nadu has taken steps to have a tie-up with an Italian company to produce carnation planting material and given uh, to the farmers on subsidized rate. And um, recent past, sensor-based monitoring, even for plant growth or diseases or even water and the climatic factors, sensor-based monitoring system has to be taken up. Uh, everywhere now, the artificial intelligence are being uh, I know, uh, taught here we have to use the robotic. Simulation models can be very well created. By using simulation models sitting in one room, we can, uh, through the computers, in, we can monitor the entire uh, things happening inside the polyosis. These are all the very well possible in the polyculture is concerned. Coming to the value chain, we developed value chain model for a few crops, only for uh, jasmine, marigold, carnation. It is possible for creating value chain model for most of the high value as well as the traditional flowers so that the marketing efficiency will be very well enhanced so that finally ultimately the farmers will get benefited so apart from the fresh flowers at this crisis of pandemic covid 19 we have to think about big on value addition whereas wherever possible we have to convert the flowers even orchids and all very well we can convert into a value addition we can follow the thailand model which will pay ways for efficient use of the surplus production during this kind of crisis. So with that, I conclude uh, my presentation. Anything uh, you want, very well, I'm here to answer you. Thank you. And very civil, very civil. Very well, uh, thank you very much, and I wish you all the best. Any critical questions, anything needed, you can